welcome to the Rusty Hook Kayak Fishing Podcast. A member of the Paddle and Fin Podcast Network. We're streaming live via Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. Bring you the latest in fishing tips, gear reviews with our friend from Payne Outdoors, Chris Payne, as well as some local and regional tournament news. We'll bring you on some special guests to talk kayak fishing. Now, let's join John Rapp, your host. Hey guys, welcome to Rusty Hook Kayak Fishing Podcast. I'm John Rapp, and uh, whew, what a day. So, I think I've got everything set up here. Um, had uh, a few cancellations, so I had to change to show up a little bit. But I've got some good good quality people lined up. Um, so if you get a chance, make sure you go like, share, comment, hit that like button so I know that you're watching. Uh, my viewers that are there, hit that like and share button. And see your name scroll across there so I can comment. And thank you. Um, if this show uh, is going to be is part, you know, we're part of the Paddle and Fin family now. And so it'll be re-aired on Saturday with the Paddle and Fin Podcast. Um, make sure you also, when you get the opportunity, go to anchor.fm slash John Rapp if you're on the road traveling and you can't watch this. Just go check it out live. We'll check out some past episodes. Um, but anyway, so tonight's episode, episode 38, um, is uh, something that touches close to home for me. And... Uh, as you can see, I'm wearing something that, you know, do not give in. And this is all regarding to uh, the show, you know, is, is socks and cookies. And I'm getting blown up on the uh, Look like Mikey Holcomb might be able to come on the show. So we may have a, a longer show than usual. Um, but anyway, um, I've reached out to... A friend of mine who runs a nonprofit organization called Socks and Cookies, and I know a lot of you may be familiar with it, especially the West Virginia guys, because the past three years or so, we fish uh, the Socks and Cookies event every year. Um, it's a way to, for us to provide money to that organization, and uh, Shannon and her crew uh, make and provide and send out care packages, i.e. socks and cookies, is why it's all what it is. I've been deployed. I've been overseas. I've been to Iraq. I've been to Italy. And I know what it's like to get something in the mail, get letters in the mail from grade school kids, uh, get a package from somebody like Shannon and her organization, and uh, get things from them that you really can use, and you know, when I was in Iraq, with the PXs were still non non avoid. You had to get supplied up before you left when we were in Kuwait. Um, and then the, the the PXs that they did have were basically uh, shipped in Connex boxes with uh, a detailed guys working the, the stores for the first few months until they got things up and running. Um, but anyway. I don't want to talk too much about what Shannon and him do. I want to bring her on and let her explain to you what she does. So let, let me reach over to uh, her and you bring her on. Uh, looks like she's online, so Shannon, I want to dial you up. Hey, 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 Shannon. Hey, can, can you reorient, reorient your phone sideways for me so I can get you in the yes. hole? Yes. Beautiful. Let's see Is that better? That's a lot better. I can Now we get to look at that beautiful smile on top of that beautiful <laughs> background, that American flag. Oh, outstanding. Yes. Outstanding. So, yes, I mean, the background is much better than the smile. Oh, no, no, no. No, and, you know... What that smile does with those hands and the work you do put a lot of smiles on soldiers like me, you know, when I was deployed. So, 
Um, I, I did a little background there about real briefly touched on what you do and what's, why it's important to me. And if you don't care, introduce yourself, introduce your organization, and tell everybody out there uh, what you're all about. Yes. Uh, so first of all, John, thank you so much for having me on. I really do appreciate it. Was excited to come on and visit. And uh, so I'm Shannon Modisset. Um, I started Socks and Cookies uh, five years ago. We just celebrated our fifth birthday in August. Um, so that was a huge, um, huge accomplishment for us turning five. And um, yeah, so just the last five years, been trying to do everything we can to support our deployed service members. Outstanding. And, 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 and a lot of the stuff you do, um, now the, and like I told the guys and all the, the people that are watching right now, Shannon and Socks and Cookies also, if you're wanting to look at what they do on Facebook, they also have another way to reach out to you. I'm very active with her on this platform. And Shannon, just so you know, I have you up on on the screen, not only, and then I have, right now i got your Facebook page, but I'm going to show everybody also your Twitter page, which is Kicking Bass for Troops. Um, yes. So guys, you know, there's more than one way to reach out to Shannon and speak with her and, and reach out to her, but Tourney X, she has her own link there for all the tournaments for each state that she runs tournaments on. Uh, Shannon, uh, go ahead and tell them about what you do there and what you offer. Yeah, so Kicking Bass for Troops, it's one of my favorite programs. Um, as someone who grew up in Louisiana and loved fishing with my dad, um, bass fishing, it's, you know, just being out on the water has always been one of my favorite things. And um, so 30, literally 30 days after starting Socks and Cookies, one of my friends had fished a charity kayak tournament and was just like, hey, Shannon, I think you should do this. I'm like, what? You know, it was the first time I'd even heard of uh, kayak fishing. And so I reached out to Dwayne and said, hey, I'm a new nonprofit, want to host a tournament. Like, can we make this happen? And 30 days in, had our first tournament, um, started building that relationship with Dwayne. Um, and at the time, it was just going to be like this one-off tournament. Like, hey, let's see how it goes. Um, so we had the one that first year in September 2017. So yeah. we go into 2018, and I'm just like, man, you know, this could be so much fun. Like, just being able to hit that population because so many of, like, our, you know, anglers, um, like, hunters, you know, they're patriots, you know, and they're veterans and active duty and first responders. And so it was just kind of like, okay, let's let's try a few tournaments and just see how it goes. And um, so the first year we had a nationwide Georgia and um, Oklahoma in 2018. And out of those three tournaments that year like it was just we had really small numbers but the feedback that we got and it was just kind of like oh okay like this could be something this could be something fun um and it was you know the goal of it was going to be that the proceeds from the tournaments would go back into the deployed military units from that state or the funds would be used for the care packages and, you know, now fast forward 2022, we actually have 22 tournaments this year. Um, we're down to our last four tournaments of the season. And it's just still kind of surreal to me that it's grown to be this way. And all the clubs that have given us love and, you know, all of our veterans and active duty. I mean, it's just, it's been in the relationships that I've personally made with so many of the anglers has just been amazing and it's like it inspires me because when I get the messages like from you or other veterans that say hey thank you for sending those care packages of what they did for me and um, so I have these huge lofty goals with what kick and bass for troops what I want it to turn into and I'm just wanting to make sure we don't get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> well I, I think your organization is outstanding and, and the reason I chose this time uh, to talk to, about this and bring it up is one, um, it's 
getting close to October. We got Veterans Day coming up, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. And you know, so your year is wrapping up. And and I did reach out to you. And guys, I'm going to post her PayPal link in the, the uh, section here shortly. Uh, so if you want to make a donation to Shannon's group, you don't have to fish a tournament to do it, but you can make a donation to her. Just make make sure you let her know, hey, it's from West Virginia or wherever you're from, so she can allocate it to the right area, and um, a deployed unit um, can can uh, benefit from what you've done. Because, you know, Thanksgiving's coming up. Um, you got Christmas coming up. And I know it takes three to five weeks for those packages to make their move through the APO system. Um, so yes. that's that's one of the reasons why I thought, hey, Shannon, let's do this now I'll, I'll, so we can get you get some, get some information out about what you're doing. Because I know you do this year, all year, to different units as, you, as it comes uh -huh. in and goes. Uh, I know we've had our West Virginia tournament. We've had several over the years. I've tried to, uh, to promote and help you with those. And we've had some good good turnouts. Um, oh yeah. Um, but uh, you know, let everybody just go a little bit more in detail about how you break down the money you get from Tourney X and what you use it for. Because I think one year in West Virginia we sent packages to, to a, a deployed unit, and then one year you caught a deployed unit coming home, and you was able to get them money so they could have a, a like a, a welcome home banquet. Um, yes. So, I mean, those are different ways that Shannon's proceeds reach, work to help our, our families when they come back. So. Yeah, and, and thank you for that. I mean, and you're right. I mean, that's, you know, so our goal eventually is that proceeds from every tournament would go right back into the deployed unit for, like, a family day event, the welcome home ceremony. Um, you know, and as we continue to... You because you know, we're still in that infancy stage where like some anglers and sponsors look at us and go, oh, this is a nonprofit hosting, you know, fishing tournaments, you know, so trying to break down those walls so that the sponsors see us and go, hey, like what they're doing, like they're trying to put on good tournaments, provide good prizes, and then that money goes back into our military. So the long term goal is that with every state, whether it's West Virginia, North Carolina, is that every tournament those proceeds would be chosen to go to that unit to um those family day events we just went to a family day event on sunday in oklahoma right and how that all came to be was in 2018 with the oklahoma tournament we adopted the 138 fighter wing out of tulsa and they have invited us back for their family day event every year because of that support and so that's where we really try to get the word out to anglers and to our sponsors is that like, hey, there's no limits to where these tournaments can go to you and where the proceeds. Um, it's just trying to let people know like we, you know, we try to follow uh, closely along with the rules um, that like KBF uses. We have a little bit, you know, we, we want people to see that we're consistent and that we're following our own rules too. Right, right. Um, but the proceeds, um, you know, it is. We we love if somebody says, hey, we only want it to go to the state of West Virginia or to Georgia, you know, to honor that. And then for people that say, hey, I just want to give money, like see it how you use fit. Um, you know, the cool thing is, like, we're a volunteer. Like, I don't make any money from Socks and Cookies. I have a full-time day job. Um, and so, you know, this is what... I work my job just so I can do socks and boots. I mean, it's, I you know, you. that's, that's the thing that I try to let people know that, you know, our overhead is really small being, um, we're lucky where we're located. Um, and so it's just, we, we try to let people know that when you make a donation that, you know, 95 cents of your donation is going back into the mission. I've got I mean, your page pulled up right now. It looks like, uh, you guys had a really good time in, in a big hangar, uh, and everybody's it, able to look at that. So, Yes, that was a blast. Getting to hang out, um, getting to hang out with military families is the days that I get tired or it's like, 
you know, trying to manage my day job and then manage lots of cookies. And I go to an event like this and meeting these families and their sacrifice or hearing these kids talk and man, I just walk away and I'm like, you know, ready to climb mountains because it gets you excited of realizing that what we're doing and, you know, these care packages, when I get letters of, you know, from a staff sergeant that says, you know, my guys were arguing over the golden Oreos and the beef jerky, <laughs> you know, it just makes mm -hmm. me laugh because, you know, and that's where I try to use socks and cookies as educational too, so that we remember why we get to live here free every single day. Like, you know, why you and I get to do this and why I get to go to Starbucks and drink a coffee. Like, I want to communicate. Like, there's a reason we get to have those freedoms. Heck, yeah. I mean, th those guys, I mean, it's it's tough. And, you, and when you're pulled from your family, called up to go serve, um, it's tough. I, I can remember when I left in 2000 to 2003 um, we had one of our guys who worked at at City National Bank and he was one of our really leaders of our unit NCOs but because he couldn't pass his physical because you know how they give you a rig rigorous physical before you deploy um, and so he basically took up what you're, you're doing just for our unit I mean it seemed like every three or four weeks, he had he was sending forty or fifty care packages with, you know, pantyhose, socks, uh, toothpaste, underarm deodorant, dental floss, um, batteries, and things of that like that that he could send. Not not a whole lot of batteries, but like your small AAA batteries, because there were a lot of you know regulations on what you could ship like that, but. Uh, I mean, he was a godsend, uh, and you know, and another thing he did on, he did send a lot of beef jerky, um, yeah, and he also sent a lot of like protein powders for the guys because a lot of us, you know, uh -huh. we, we, we would lift weights on our off time. You know, there wasn't a whole lot to do other than uh, work, uh, do your mission, prepare for the next mission, sleep, eat, and and work out. So, um, but, and that's what when you said the protein powders, especially at Christmas. You know, we like try to include as much of that as we can, you know, and try to find those partnerships to where, you know, we can get that because, you know, or like the five hour energy drink or tuna packs or, um, you know, we really try to make sure that those care packages, you know, and we know a lot of times it's not just going to be one person impacted. You know, it could be three to five people that are impacted by one care package and to make sure you know, it's like we just want them to know when they open it up, no matter where they are in the world, that they're like, hey, somebody at home is thinking about us. They care what we're doing. They see us. And we just want them to know they're not alone. That no matter where they are, that back at home, we're like, hey, like we see you. We see what you're doing every day. So, Shannon, t you had 22 tournaments this year, right? Were they uh -huh. all, were they, uh, I know West Virginia had one. Now, what's the one that's coming up here? Is it this weekend? or Because I know I was going to fish it, but I got to go to a wedding, so I can't fish it. But what is, and I'm going to make a donation on behalf of West Virginia for that. But what, what is, uh, what else do you have other than your state ones? Do you have, do you have any, like, yes. nationwide? Like, yeah, we have some fun. So this year we added a lot of uh, some new nationwide tournaments um, that started off in February of this year. Um, so this weekend we have Oklahoma and then we have um, a regional tournament with Nevada, Utah, Arizona, um, Colorado, and New Mexico. Um, next weekend we have North Carolina and then we finish out the season with our Bass Tober Thriller, which yeah. is the weekend before Halloween. Uh, last year was the first time we did that event. Huge success. I mean, people were excited. That six-hour fishing window, the Saturday before um, Halloween, and uh, had a lot of fun with it. And, uh, you know, and then, like, our tournament starting off earlier this year, like in February, because we had never started that early. 
And it was kind of like, you know, hey, in the south, we know that people can fish in February. Like up north, people are like, hey, my waters don't open. Yeah. You get on the water till the end of April. And um, so it was a lot of fun, like seeing the different formats. And, you know, it's it's fun watching the new people come in because they're like, hey, you know, do you have a tournament for, you know, um, like Texas? And then when it's passed and then, you know, they get excited and know they're going to tell their friends, you know, for the coming, you know, the following year. And so that's been the best part of it is just watching the word of mouth. And then our Facebook group that we have has grown into 850 members and, you know, just really trying to keep the interaction live there because we want you know, the biggest thing that I've learned from my group of ambassadors that I have uh, on my team, I have seven amazing guys that ha have helped really guide and direct me into a lot of the fishing practices. And the thing from the very beginning is like, just be consistent, you know, follow your rules, let the anglers know that you're going to do the right thing. And then if something gets missed, you're going to get it fixed. Well, it so that like they know that yeah, it looks like you're up to 1,166 followers at the moment. So, um, yeah. so looking good, outstanding. Shannon, what's on chat? What's on on uh, schedule? What do you got on the books prepared? What are you preparing for 2023? Um, uh, for 2023, it's um, better getting better prizes. Um, we know that some people, you know, a big group of people come out to, you know, support the mission, support the tournaments. We also know that people want those prizes because especially now with times being harder, you know, if you're spending your $30, you want that awesome prize. Uh, so for me, it's that challenge of, you know, getting sponsors to really see us and what we're doing to buy into our mission. Um, so getting those, you know, better prize packages for our tournaments. Uh, and then it's also finding ways to do um, partner better partnerships with the local clubs. We've got some amazing clubs um, that have supported us, but it's finding a way to break that wall down with some of the other ones to find out how we can partner with them uh, to grow that piece to where, you know, we can just, we can start really seeing that movement that happens in some of the states where we haven't been able to grow yet. I got you. I, I know when I ran the West Virginia kayak anglers, we held, uh, we, every turn, every month we do a tournament. We take up donations to give to a charity, which one month, a couple of years ago, I think in 19, we did with you guys. Um, so uh, that might be something, that's an angle that you could go with and say, hey, I'll, I'll send you a couple hats. I'll get, send you a couple shirts. Put my logo on your banner. Give away those products. And, 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 and in return, one of your tournaments make me your charity for the month. And uh, that, that's an idea that you could go with. Um, but uh, appreciate you coming on with us tonight. Um, we had three viewers. I don't think my chat board's working, so I apologize. I can't see who all's coming. No, in. that's okay. I had a couple of people that had messaged um, about getting on there and, um, you know, talking and stuff. But I know. Um, but yeah, John, it's just it's. I was excited when you reached out about wanting to bring me on, and you know, I could talk. <laughs> I can talk all the day about the reason we do what we do, and. You know, and I've just been lucky in that the fishing, you know, our fishing tournaments have grown into what they are. And being able to connect the Socks and Cookies mission with the Kick and Bass for Troops mission, you know, that fundraising piece um, yeah. has been a lot of fun watching them come in. So, uh, before we let you go, um, shoot out your uh, locations that people can find you, like... Uh, your Facebook, your Twitter, which we've already showed. Um, so folks, go find those. Hit that like button and share them with your friends. Veterans, if you haven't liked these pages, shame on you. Um, they, they are there to support 
you, your families, and the young ones that are now doing the missions that us old guys did years ago. Um, so, but yeah, Shannon, shoot those messages, those those uh, accounts out for people to look for you wherever you are. Okay, I will do that. Thank you again. Appreciate. I mean, appreciate the support that you've continued to give us personally and um, via West Virginia. You know, it's been um, it was awesome getting to know you through that group and then on Twitter. You know, getting to have that there. So thank you for that. Oh, my, my pleasure. And. Um, when you get everything set up and scheduled, uh, whenever you get that rolled out, uh, shoot me a message and we'll bring you back on and we can do a 20 minute segment on you know, what you got planned for 2023 and you can let the West Virginia guys know what they can expect for their region. So. Okay, well I appreciate that. All right, hey Shannon, thank you very much. Thank you, I appreciate you. All right guys, that was Shannon Modisset from Socks and Cookies. Uh, who joined us there real quick. Um, while we were online, um, I hit up Mikey Holcomb a little bit uh, about coming on, and I've also got Blaine Winters scheduled to come on, as well as uh, Fletch Griffin. So I'm going to dial up Fletch. He is at a trade show right now, and um, let's see what those guys are going got going on down there. So, same guard Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Boy, I tell Sorry. you. I tell you, the party's going hard down and wherever you're at, Big Daddy. What's going on? What's going on? Hey, Fletch. So, I see you're at an outdoor trade show. What do you got going on, man? Uh, we're at the uh, 360 Adventure Collective in oh, Charlotte, okay. North Carolina. Yeah. 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 Uh, some of our boys from... Uh, Ace Resort are down there right now. He, so, yeah, definitely. I, I might be drinking beer with them. I'm not sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Outstanding. So what kind of clothing, you, you, what soft goods are you guys looking at to bring into your uh, your, your store now? Some, uh, yeah. Some, some big Agnes? Yeah, uh, so look at some new stuff from uh, NRS. Uh, some some uh, Astral has some really killer shoes and things like that. Some water yeah. shoes. Outstanding. Uh, yeah, it's just been fun hanging out at the Whitewater Park. Uh, they got a beautiful facility down here. Uh, they got this like beautiful, you know, Whitewater kind of course. Uh, they, they got zip lines. They got mountain bike trails. They've oh, yeah. got, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, it's a really cool place. It's like uh, an outdoor version of Six Flags down here, you know. <laughs> so. hey, hey, you can't be doing that to to Mikey down at the store, okay? I mean, you can't you can't put him. You know, doing rock climbing, back in the back of the store, and then having him zip down. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we might, I, might that, just salt rock at the shop now. I've been inspired, so. That, that would probably be you doing that all day. Hey, you go handle that customer. I'm stuck up here right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run this route. They've got they've got some killer rock walls here that overhang a giant pool, so you don't even have to be clipped in. If you fall, you just you, you fall in the water. So Outstanding, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, make sure you get some video of that, Fletch, and, and make sure you send it my way so I can sh I can share it with here. you. Share it with us. Yeah, see if I can run you through the crowd real quick here. We got, uh, if I if I know how to use this thing. Uh, all right. Hey, hey, turn your phone side, sideways for me. There you go. Yeah. Here, we'll just, uh, Bane, say hello. Hey, who am I talking to? What do you say, guys? Heck yeah, that's a good crowd. Everybody say hello. Everybody say hello. Hello. Everybody say 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 hello. Outstanding, man. Outstanding. Well, hey, I'll let you get back to socializing. And uh, I know that most business meetings are done at what you're doing right now. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go take care of business, brother, and thanks for jumping on with us. Nothing but love for you, and I'll, I'll catch up with you soon. All right. We'll see you later, man. Be All good. right, brother. All right. Bye. Hey, that's my boy Fletch from Westbrook Supply. He's out there doing business at the in Charlotte. Doc Copper, the 
I'll have to take a look at your comments, my brother, and see what you got going on. Um, but uh, guys, if you see what he has questions there, help him out while we uh, get a few people on here. Okay, so I'm gonna reach out to Mikey Holcomb and let's see if we can get him up and running. But well, before we do that, let's take a quick break. Yak Gadget, proudly supplying you with American-made products and gear. Check out yakgadget.com. Ace Resort, West Virginia's number one destination for whitewater, hiking, zip lining, and more. Check out acerap.com. That's Brook Supply Company, Georgia's number one go-to kayak fishing supply store. Gear, accessories, and custom rigging. Look them up, westbrooksupplyco.com. Kane Outdoors, a custom plastic maker, design consultant, product reviewer, and outdoor writer. Check out more at paintoutdoors.com. Feel free kayaks. Paddle, pedal, or power. There's something for everyone. Check out feelfreeus.com. All right, guys, we're back. I appreciate you hanging out with us. We're 31 minutes into the show. Doug King... I agree with you. Shannon does a great job with tournaments. They're a great way to support socks and cookies. And I really enjoy participating. Likewise, my man. Um, uh, th socks and cookies, thanks, John, for letting me be part of the podcast. Hey, it's my pleasure, Shannon. Appreciate you. We've got Heath on. Hey, Heath Mullins, Bubby. What's up, Bub? Doug King from South Carolina. Mikey is on. Uh, we're going to reach out to him now. Hopefully he's home and we can uh, get a good connection with him. If not, then we'll buzz up my boy Blaine Winters, who's standing by. Blaine uh, is now the first repeat champion of MSKA. He just won Angler of the Year, and we'll get some feedback from him. So uh, let's, let's see if my, Mikey um, was going to come on the show earlier and then had to work overtime. Uh, but then he just messaged while we were talking that he's freed up. So we'll go ahead and jump, see if we can get him on. He had one heck of a tournament this weekend, and we sort of fed into what we did last week, which was talk about uh, cold water techniques. Hey, Mike, hey Mikey, we got Mikey on here, and we bring him on the on the show. Uh, there he yeah. is. So, uh, Mikey, we had a show last week. We were talking about fall weather, cold water techniques, uh, the falling temperatures here in West Virginia. Um, and we talked about the di some different techniques on what to do uh, to increase your odds of catching some good fish. And then I turn around a few days later and I look at your scores. Hey, Doc. Appreciate the follow, brother. Uh, we look at your scores and, dude, you smashed them. You had your personal best of a 21.75 New River fish. And then you had another monster fish. A total of over 60 inches. So tell us, Mikey, and you've been on this show quite a bit. A lot of people know who you are in West Virginia and our region. Explain to them a little bit on what your techniques were and what you did. And if you don't care, sideways your camera for me. See if I, there we go. Get your full screen. So, okay. Um, can you hear me good? Oh, yeah. You sound good, buddy. Okay, so uh, like you were saying, you know, this time of year, the water's going to start cooling down. Those, me and Evan were joking the other day about, oh, they're, they're going to start putting their feed bags on. You know what I mean? It's it's going to be right. It's going to be really right really soon. Um, and uh, honestly, moving baits, you know, this time of year, especially this year, we're getting a lot of rain, so the water's constantly fluctuating. It's coming up. It's getting dirty. Yeah, that's one of the things that we were talking about. You know, we didn't have a summer low water season. We had spring flow all year this year. Um, yeah. But So how did that work out for you with the cooling temperatures and the higher water? So I toughed to anticipate you rising on Sunday because I would rather fish it when it's rising. It ended up not rising because clater is funky with how they let water out, but it was stable and it was just kind of bobbing. You know what I mean? It was just kind of, um, it was a little dirty. It was up just enough with the flow 
I got to my ramp at like six o'clock. I expected for there to be like four or five people there. There was nobody there. It was still dark. So I went and sat in the curb about 6.50. And uh, I was actually motoring upstream to my what I would call my juice. And I noticed there was a little, there was just a little line under the water. And I could tell that there was a ledge. I could tell there was a ledge there in Evan if I found the last few trips on the Susquehanna and what those fish hold on. And I saw it and I was like, man, there's got to be a fish there. You know what I mean? So I went over there to check it out and I cast the plopper on it twice and there was bait flicking everywhere. And I was like, man, there, I know there's a fish here. And I cast the, I cast the 110 plopper the third time over that ledge and brought it over. And I had about two feet from the boat. I had that 2175 eat the plopper oh. and short line me. And it turned that, it turned that reel into a violin, man. It just started singing. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought I said, at first I was like, I was like, yeah, this is, this is a good fish. It's like 18, 18 to 20. You know what I mean? It's big, small mouth. And then it jumped one time and I was like, oh, okay, so this is a giant. So when, when it jumped, I went and I just grabbed my net because at this point there's only like six feet of line out. So I grab my net and I get it ready and I pick up my slack and I just go for it. I just, you know, I just swing it and scoop it. And when I got it in the boat, that's when I realized I was like, oh, I was like, yeah, this is, I was like, this is a, this is a, this is a giant, giant. So I had it on grip. When I had it on grips, I put it on the board just to see. And it was like 22 and a quarter. And I was like, so. When I take the grips out, I was like, this might be a 22-inch fish. It ended up being a 21.75. I drifted downstream. I caught that fish on a plopper. I drifted downstream. I got out on the bank a little bit because I was like, I'm not going to risk losing this fish in a tournament. And I got my picture. And I motored right back up to that spot, cast the plopper on it. Nothing. I'm like, I know there's got to be more fish two weeks ago. Like Those big fish are grouping up. And uh, I cast the jackhammer up there and brought it across the ledge. Boom, 19 and a quarter. Same thing. I never saw it till it was beside the boat. It flopped, and I was like, that's a big one. So I put it in the boat, got a picture. And, you know, I didn't get out for that one. I just took a pick real quick because I was. Yeah. And uh, I motored right back up, same spot. Cast on it a couple times, two or three times, didn't catch nothing. And uh, I noticed about 40 feet above it and to the left, there was a similar little line. So I knew there was a half ledge there under under the water. And uh, I cast jack, I cast a plopper on it one time, nothing. And I cast a jackhammer up there and caught a 20 and a half. And I, it was funny. I talked to, I called Aaron Finney a couple. I called him twice before that, just talking back and forth with him. And he said, he was jokingly, he was like, call me again in 10 minutes when you, when you catch another one. And I called him and he was like, no, you didn't. I said, I just caught a 20 and a half, man. He said, what are you going to do? I said, I said, it's three fish limit. I mean, yeah. for me to call. So I ended up, I was like, I don't know. And it was like between 650 and 728, I caught those three fish. And that was counting, getting out of the boat for the one and. So I ended up motoring all the way up on the left side and fishing my juice, and I caught two 15s on a chatterbait and like a 13 and a half on a chatterbait. And I was like, so then I cross the river and come down the other side. I was like, man, yeah, you know, they they really weren't eat, they weren't eating anywhere else. By this time, the rain was wanting to, it was wanting to rain, it was wanting to set in. I was like, I've got 61 and a half inches with three fish, like. I knew you left in order that for, spot right there, right then. You're like, I'm out of here. I'll come back in the morning. <laughs> Well, I, I actually, I fished up and fished over and fished down for about an hour and a half, just kind of piddling around to seeing. And I pulled back up on that same spot with a plopper and bombed a plopper over it from way out. And I lost like probably about a 17 or 18 halfway to the boat. And I lost it. I think I was on the phone with Caitlin and I was like, I'm done. I was, I mean, for me to call at this point, three fish limit, I was like, I'd have to catch another 20. So I told Caitlin, I was like, I'm going to go eat. They got a Cracker Barrel in Prince 
something. I was like, I'm going to go yeah. eat breakfast, man, and go, go meet Evan, go meet Evan for lunch in Hinton. And then I reached out to Amos and was just seeing if maybe he needed a ride from his float. You know, I was like, I got like four hours, five hours after I ate breakfast. I was like, I'll see if anybody needs help. Man, um, that, that sounds like a heck of a day. But it was, it was something that me and Evan had this discussion and it was something that last year we talked about, although this year might seem lackluster, like you feel like you didn't, you know what I mean? You didn't do a lot. You, you fit, we both finished really solid throughout the year, but there was nothing that was just like, wow, until Sunday. But when you, when you reflect on, I would have never fished that last year if it weren't for my experience on a bigger river system like the Susquehanna. I'd have never in a million years, you know, m me as an angler and my personal growth, I'd have never even thought about fishing that last year or the year before. I'd have just, it, you know, it looked, it was nondescript, featureless water. And we just talked about how proud we are of our own personal growth as anglers and what, although they're minuscule, you know what I mean, details, they they pay off especially when the fish are stacked up like that they're grouped they're grouped up on bait i don't know i don't know how to explain why the fish were there but they were there and uh they were big fish i mean i'm we were talking you know my goal now i broke my pb by a quarter inch from a 21 and a half and it's like i mean my goal now you know I, you know i love smallmouth and mm -hmm. uh i mean now my goal is a 22 and it's like it might be it might be five years before I catch fish like that. It might be 10 years before I ever have a day like that again. So I'm still kind of on cloud nine. You just, unless you know about fishing, you know, you could tell somebody, oh, I caught 61 and a half inches for three fish. And they're going to be like, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I, but, I, I was thinking at one time I had the record for quite a while, but you just destroyed it. Because I had a 21.75 and 19.5. Well, it's like people. But, yeah. It's just the uh, the chatterbait or the jackhammer in specific, man. I've talked and I got to give credit where it's due. Anybody that knows Jody Queen, mm. uh, super forthcoming with information. I've, I'm lucky enough, and everybody in Western, pretty much anybody who reaches out to Jody, he's gonna. When Jody talks, you listen. Amen. Point blank period. When Jody's talking, you're listening, man. And, and if you don't, then something's wrong with you. And <laughs> I've talked to him. I've talked to him extensively about the New River, and I personally, before this season, wasn't a big jackhammer fan until like Santee Cooper throwing it on cypress trees, and then Susquehanna, and then the New, and and just some instances where I've really smashed some good fish on a jackhammer. And he was like, and he was just telling me, he was like, when it's dirty like that, it's hard to beat a spinnerbait, you know, or a spinnerbait or a jackhammer, like blades are king just like on susky and i don't even know what made me throw it i was like they ate a plopper you know i know i just knew there was that little six cents i'm like there's a fish there there's another big fish there there's too much bait that's way too big of a fish to be there and i just pulled out the jackhammer and just and then after that i kind of put the plopper away and i'm a die hard plopper guy i'm a die yeah, hard especially I this mean, time of year yeah yeah like I'll, I'll die on that hill and i pulled out that chatterbait set up and and went to slinging it and uh it paid off man i could have cried i mean honestly it was just one of those moments it's like i did not cry but it's one of the, it's, just, it's just one of those it's one of those moments especially to do it with small mouth i mean yeah. when i caught the first one i was like okay i'm gonna catch 21.75 and then i'm gonna I'm going to round out my limit limit with like two fifteens and be, be angry. You know what I mean? Be like, Oh man, I could have had. And then I caught that 19 and a quarter and I'm like, I really, I was like, man, I'm, I really might be able to do something today. Cause I had a pretty dismal day on the Greenbrier per usual dink fest, caught 40 fish and none of them over 16 inches. Right. And I was like, I really might be able to do something. I got two fish. And then it was literally eight minutes later. I cast to that half ledge above it. And as soon as, when they eat that jack, when a big, we're talking like a 20 inch smallmouth, when it eats that jackhammer, you almost wonder in the back of your mind, you're like, is that a catfish? Cause it just stops it dead in its tracks. And it never, they never show themselves like they do on a plopper. When they eat a plopper, man, they come flopping and they're trying to spit travels. But when they eat a jackhammer, they kind of bury themselves in the current. 
and you they really don't expose themselves until they're right at the boat and when i saw it was a small i saw bronze and i was like holy cow and i put it on the board and it's 20 and a half and then it, it then it it kind of washed over me i was like i just did something really really special especially for river smallmouth i mean that's it doesn't get any better for a guy like me that that's what i love yeah. it was like this well, is i mean my, this is as good my first thought <laughs> this when is I as saw good it, as it like, gets my first thought when i saw it was all of that hard work that you did last year paid off this year yeah. you know so hey mikey yeah thank you buddy i, I appreciate you i'm gonna cut you short i'm gonna reach out to blaine and let him tell You're us good. about tell, tell us about his angle of the year uh win yeah. um but, i look forward <laughs> but hey, um, God bless you. Go get you some dinner and tell mama I said hi. All right. Sounds good, buddy. All right, brother. All right. See all right, you, John. Hey, we were able to get Mikey on after all. Outstanding. Uh, but Blaine's sitting in the background, so let's reach out to him and uh, get him on. Blaine Winters has been on the show here just recently, and uh, he was telling us about his, he was going to shoot hard to win this title. He would be the two-time repeat of, of this event, of Angler of the Year for Mountain State Kayakers, and it appears that he was successful. Let's hear his story before we get him up here. It shows he's online, so we'll give him a chance to answer here. There he is. Hey, all right. All right, guys. What's hey, up, bro? brother? Hey, Ben. Hey, turn your phone sideways for me, Big Daddy. All right. There we go. Okay, let's bring you on the show. Work? That works great. All right, man. You're live, bro, and unfiltered here, sitting out on the porch. And I am looking forward to hearing how you called this shot three, four weeks ago, said you were going to go and you were going to win it. And by God, you did. Angler of the <laughs> Year. Angler of the Year. Two-time. Yeah, I don't know if I called it. but No, baby, you called it. You told me, so Johnny, I'm going to go take that trophy home. And I'm like, now I, now we, I, I'm looking online right here. Let's pull that up here on Blaine's page here, guys, while I got Blaine on. Blaine, go ahead and tell everybody about how, what it took to bring home the Angler of the Year championship. Ah uh, man, I, really, I'm lucky. I had a good league going in. Uh, I, I had a rough, rough tournament. Uh, I lost some fish. Uh, I, I lost a pole. I lost a paddle. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was a tough tournament for you. It, it really was. I mean, if I'd have got the fish in that I got on the hook, I, it might have been a little better, but. Well, it was um, just one of those tournaments. I don't know if I was pressured or if I was just feeling it. Or I everything you, I did seemed to go wrong. Buddy, I read your post and it said something about you missed four quality, quality fish. So, t- Man, tell, us, I, tell us what I, happened. Well, I start off with I thought they'd be eating the top water, and, right. and I, I threw it and threw it, and I had a couple come up and grab a back hook, and I lost them. And finally, I, I, about like nine thirty, I didn't even have a fish yet. So I mean, we were we were three hours in I, without a fish, and, and finally, I just gave up on top water, and I, I threw a spinner bait, and I caught a seventeen and a half, and I finally nice. got in the boat. And uh, that was this I, swear, day, I, day I knew one. where I was at. Day one or day two? This is day one. Okay. Okay. And uh. Everybody was really good. They, they they gave me the water to myself. I'm not going to disclose a certain spot, but everybody that fishes it, they just they let me have it. They didn't want to get in the way of it. And uh, when I finally got down to my spot, there was a big lay down, new lay down in there, and it messed up the whole spot. Everything had filled in. The fish weren't there, uh. and I was. I was feeling it, the pressure, and, and so I started working my way back up, and you have to drag up through a rapid. Yep. And I so looked down, and my paddle's gone. This is the Greenbrier, right? No, this is New River. Oh, it's new? Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I looked down, and my paddle's gone. 
<laughs> I just drug up through this rapid. I looked down, my paddle's gone. I'm like, okay. So I go back down the rapid, and I fished my way anyways without a paddle because I have my motor. <laughs> and I did end up, I called a couple times, and I, and I found my paddle. Thank goodness. And I went back up, and, and uh, I started fishing again. And my strap that I pulled my kayak with, it got wrapped around my motor. So then I'm, I'm in the rapid. My motor's tangled up. <laughs> so I'm floating back down, and I'm trying to fight with my motor, floating down a rapid. And uh, I get it, took care of, and I start going back up, and my plopper pole's gone. <laughs> so I'm like, well, good, good, good grief the odds man i mean it's like it, yeah it was like everything that it was murphy that day you know, exactly so. but i mean i everything that went wrong i had enough go right i had 47 and three quarter inches and and now, it was where did luckily that, travis had a rough day too where did that put you after day one where were you sitting in the standings I was sitting in, I believe, sixth place, fifth okay. place, maybe. That's not bad. That's, I mean, that's, I wasn't sitting bad. Forty-seven and three quarters. Yeah, uh, that's a that's a shit. not a bad. That's a good day for three fish. I take that. Yeah, three day. years yeah. ago, I think ninety inches wins New River. Exactly. I don't know what's happened, but uh, you know, three years ago, ninety inches wins. We've gotten so, better. We've gotten better. Yeah, that's probably it. We've all gotten better, fit, and we we. We've listened to you, Mark Edwards, Jody Queen, so everybody's numbers are coming up. Yeah, there's some hammers up here, isn't there? Ain't that the truth? Yeah. So I get 47 and three quarter, and I and I go ahead and I move down, and I'm I, I'm gonna put in a Bull Falls on Bluestone, and I'm gonna fish up the New River, and uh, for day two. So I go down there and. My GPS messes me up. I'm, Murphy still got a hold of me, <laughs> and uh, it sends me on the lower section of Bull Falls Road. And, and I don't know how familiar everybody is with it, but the lower section, I wasn't familiar with it. It, it is mud. I, I <laughs> I'm in a minivan. I grew up on that section of water, brother. I, I lived on that mountain right above it called Bent Mountain, and then I lived in Athens, which is just right up the road, so I would go down there and fish off the bank of Bull Falls. But matter of fact, I'm, I'm really glad you fished that area. Um, that, that area can produce some big fish this time of year. Man, I, I was impressed. Yeah. I really was. Uh, so I'm coming down through there, and I, and I get stuck, and I see this red truck go through, and it's got a Jackson kayak in the back. <laughs> we know who that is. That's Matt yeah. Ball, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, thank God Matt Ball just came through here. Cause I'm stuck and I, I'm going to have to drag my boat about 300 yards to the river and just leave my van stuck and go fish. <laughs> <laughs> so Matt comes over and he helps me get loose and gets me free. And, and nobody else came down that road the whole day. So day two, I go up and, uh, is is jet boat central mm -hmm. bass boat central. They had a, they had a boat tourney on Bluestone on Sunday that day, and uh, I got up there before everybody, and I caught a sixteen and a half, and I caught a fourteen and three quarter, and maybe a twelve or something. And it's just it's not very exciting. And then the boat set in, and I can't catch nothing. And then I do, I end up getting on a really good top water bite, and I call a couple times, and I, I put up forty six inches, and it's. You know, it's respectable, but it wasn't going to win any tournaments. But it was just lucky I had the lead I did, and it was enough to keep it. Well, you still won by, what, 15 inches for the year? It was pretty good. 30, was, uh, 30 points, I think. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was, it was significant. I'm showing everybody here. Yeah, I mean, it, it was. I'm showing everybody your photos from your Facebook page here. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I think. Uh, 2019 when I won Angler of the Year I had 93 inches I got second place I think I think this tournament I had 93 and it was 8th place or 7th place or something like that but I mean I, I think you're right I think the anglers are just getting that much better here yeah we I mean we all uh, I really I can look back 6-7 years ago I would place in the top 5 top 10 frequently 
now when I'm fishing, I'm placing in the top 20. And uh, I and I feel like I, in the five, last five years, have grown significantly. Never threw a bait caster until like three years ago. My top water game yeah. has gotten huge. Um, I'm learning a lot from you and Mark, especially Mark and, and, and uh, Jody. I mean, with all the information they provide uh, on the jackhammers and, and the spinner baits. I mean, you, you watched Mark when y'all fished together at Bluestone or at Sutton Lake when he went back up the river and was throwing a spinner bait in that high water mud and was able to do what yeah. he did. When I left at noon with three fish because I had. I had to run home. I had we had electrical issues, but still, I, you know, I fished for five hours, had three fish, and and you guys were up the river in the mud, in the mud flow, catching fish like crazy. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just I, that's what I forced myself to do too. Like you said, I hadn't used bait caster, and I won anger of the year with a spinner rod. And, and I forced myself to fish crankbaits and spinner baits and learn the conditions and when, when to throw what. And, and, and I hardly even throw a spinner rod anymore. If I don't have to throw a spinner rod, I don't even, it doesn't come out. Yeah, I, and I need to look at that new caching rod that uh, those guys built that is specifically for the, the Ned fishing system, the NFS, whatever they call it. Um, the, yeah, the, the, I, the BFS. BFS, or, yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm thinking Ned Riggs, but uh, yeah, I, I really need to break down and look at that. I, I actually, uh, my buddy lives down in Princeton, John Gillespie. Uh, we just spent close to a thousand dollars because Mudhole had their special. He built all he builds all my rods, and uh, so he's building me four rods right now. Hopefully, I have a couple of them uh, to take to Jackson County. But anyway, that's enough about me. Final thoughts, Angler of the Year, MSKA, two times, blame winners. <laughs> I'm just fortunate, man. I'm, I'm just blessed. I've, I've put in the work. I've learned so much, like you said, and and just apply it. I mean, you have to have to be willing to go with what you're supposed to be fishing, not what you want to fish. Amen, buddy. Amen. Amen. Well, buddy, super stoked when I read that post, um, and I'm sorry I reached out to you so late. Mikey was going to come on and talk about his 60 inches, and I was going to try. I was going to reach out to you and bring you in next week because we have, you know, well, we got a wedding we got to go to this Saturday, but uh, but then we got our WVKA tournament, and I was going to bring you on next week. And we talk about what does it take to go duplicate and win something in a lake versus the rivers? Because I know you're you're a hell of a lake fisherman, and uh, I mean, yeah, I started out that way, man. I, I then I learned the river, and I, I tell you what, I prefer the river now. Yeah, yeah, I, I do too. I, I'm out in the same way, and that's the reason I've been taking my rear end out to my my lakes in my my stump fields here the past two weeks. I'm practicing here thinking I can get up to O'Brien and or Woodrum or one of those lakes, getting them stump fields and work my techniques. But heck, what happened? You coming this week? weekend? No, no. I got I got a wedding. Stormy's getting married. Oh, I'm, going, that's right. I, I'm going to his wedding. But uh, yeah, man. But you know, we had that 49 degree temperature tonight last night. That water we'll change temp, it. That water temp's gonna. And we're going to have to fish hard. They're going to be moving, yeah. But, but you know what Jody Queen will say? Jody Queen will say, well, if it's black and blue, you can't go wrong. <laughs> Though that I, I tell you, uh, I'll say that grass is going to start dying and they're mm -hmm. going to start moving. Yep, yep. Hey, man, nothing but love for you and so uh, happy for your accomplishment. Uh, congratulations. Thanks, man. And uh, look forward to talking to you and picking your brain more over the next six months a year five years on what we love to do which is kayak fishing yeah hopefully we can talk about it again after southern yeah that'll be two for you that'll be two <laughs> i'm so, working on it brother so i'm gonna go ahead and call that one now like we did before champ i hope so now, take care this, brother hey man but this one's gonna this one is gonna be clean 
This is going to be a clean event for you. It's going to yeah, be, let's, let's uh, keep them on the hook. Yeah, it's going to be pleasure. It's going to be a pleasurable. You're not going to lose your your <laughs> your paddle. You're not going to have engine problems. <laughs> man, uh, yeah, I tell you, Murphy tried uh, to take it from me, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I'm I, nothing but love for you, and I'm happy that everything worked out for you. Be blessed, and thanks for coming on the rest of the. Uh, All right, thank you, brother. All right, be man. good, man. That's my boy Blaine, uh, two-time champ for MSKA. We're going to talk about what we're going to do here in the next few weeks, and uh, then we're going to log off. So next week we should have Chris Payne back. Uh, hopefully he has got that new mold that we were going to work on tonight, but he had a meeting that he had to go to today. So Chris, hope your meeting went well. All the guys that jumped on the shows and hit the like button and the follow and all that, I appreciate you. Doc Copper. Uh, uh, it looks like he's from Twitch. Um, we had some Twitch activity tonight. Um, I don't know if you guys can see his his chat when it was popping up. Sierra, uh, Buddy Vance, Mikey, thank you coming for jumping on, Mikey, when you got off work. Um, uh, Johnny Cart, uh, good to see you always, my friend. Uh, appreciate Shannon and Socks and Cookies jumping on tonight with us. We want to log off here and uh, <clears throat> wrap this up. For the folks of you guys here that uh, were not able to watch the show here on Twitch, YouTube, or Facebook, go check out our audio program on Anchor FM. It's uh, John Rapp. Nothing but love for you. Be safe. God bless. And we will see you next Tuesday night.